Hey, my name is Connor, and today I'm going to give you a masterclass in chart visualization on Coifin. Coifin's charting capabilities are vast. We allow you to show performance and fundamental charting for equities. We also allow you to plot and illustrate data series such as macro related instruments, currencies, fixed income, and more. Today, I want to show you how you can get the best out of the Coifin charting tool. In Coifin, there are three chart varieties performance, intraday, and historical graph. We're going to be spending most of our time on historical graph. But the performance chart allows you to compare the total returns and kagers of multiple securities at once. The intraday chart allows you to see intraday charting for a security. And the historical graph, which is going to be the focal point of this masterclass, allows you to tailor views for securities under both a technical and fundamental lens. And it allows you to illustrate macro-related data series as well. Kicking things off, we'll start with the very basics. If you want to pick a security or a data set, you would go over here to the left, the left panel and you would add a ticker. You can see right here, I've added Louis Vuitton and the data series widget below it is gonna be where you add in the metric that you want to assess. So if I take total revenue, for example, over a trailing 12 month basis, and I click that, it's gonna pull up a chart with trailing 12 month revenues for this security in the currency that it's domiciled in. If I wanted to change the currency, I could do that up here. If I wanted to present this as US dollar, for example, I have the ability to do that. Some basics here for the chart on the x-axis is gonna be the time period. On the y-axis is gonna be the value of whatever data series that you're adding. Up here on the top of the chart, you can change the time period as well, um, ranging from month to day all the way up to all. You can also change the frequency of the reporting as well. If you want an itemized version of this, you can click show table and it's going to break out all of that data in this chart over that time period in a kind of Excel format. You can also add multiple securities to this. So if I was interested in luxury revenues, for example, I might want to add another security, Caring, also listed in France in the same industry. At first glance, Coifin thinks we want to have these both on a group axis. Sometimes that makes sense, particularly with yields, we might want to show it in that way. However, we want to compare the revenues directly. So what I could do here is right click on the y-axis and group these two, and it's going to give me the view that I actually want. I also have the ability to change this scale type from log to linear, as well as change the maximum and minimum ranges of the chart. These charts are not just for comparing individual securities. There is also a bunch of other things that you can use, such as commodities, fixed income, or macro-related data. If, for example, I wanted to look up the United States inflation rate, I could pull that up here, and it would create a chart showing me that. I could also add the United States core inflation rate and plot those on the same axis. So now that we have the basics of what the charting tool does, we can now dive into the chart settings. So something worthwhile remembering is that most of these data points have the ability to be kind of contorted or changed in some way. And we're going to demonstrate that now. So if we go to the United States inflation rate that we have here, for example, and I click on this gear icon, it's going to allow me to change this indicator settings. So I could change this to a bar chart if I want. I could change the colors. I could also change it to an area chart. For the purpose of this, we're going to leave it as a line chart. And if I jump into the chart styling here, I can change the thickness of that line chart from thin normal to thick. I can also change if it's presented as a solid line or dashed or dotted. And I can also add statistical bands. So if I want to show the mean headline inflation rate over the past whatever period I have it filtered for, it's going to change that mean as I drag along the time period as well. I can also add highs and lows as well as a median. And if I get rid of this core inflation rate, um, I have that built here. You can also customize the color and the thickness and presentation of each of these statistical bands. For certain data series, we're going to allow you some more customization as well. So here we have Meta and the historical chart for the share price over time. We're going to allow you to have a bunch of different candle types, which you can change the colors of as well. And you can also add volume overlays with customizable colors too. The level of customizability changes depending on what data series you're looking at. So just have fun with it and play around and always click on the gear icon to see how you can change that data. RSI, for example, a technical indicator, if you were to click on the indicator settings of this data series, you would see that you have the ability to change the colors of each band as well as change what position those bands are placed in. And you can change the, the color, the thickness and the presentation of those bands as well. 
And just lastly, while we're on this chart, you can also add a bunch of customizations to the chart. If you want to add shapes, if you want to add arrows, you can change the consistency of those as well as the weight and the color. You can add percentage changes so that you can quickly plot how much percent has changed between two data series. You can add labels to specific points in the chart and then identify those more readily. You can create your own lines on the chart or you can have horizontal or landscape lines drawn for you. You can also create channels by dragging along the channel tool like this. You can have Fibonacci sequences. And my personal favorite is the pen, which allows you to just draw all over the chart at your free will. So next I wanna break down what happens when you compare multiple securities and some of the problems that you can run into. So right now I have total return for Meta up here on the chart. If I wanna then go and add Chipotle, for example, Quiffin is gonna assume that you wanna show the same data series just for a different security. So I've got these two up now. That's what I wanna see. I would naturally want them to be existing in the same panel. I might not necessarily want the axis to be split like this. So again, I can right click and group the axis. And I might go ahead and make that linear as well. So this is nice in this case, but if I did want to present these on separate panels, up here on the legend, you're gonna see a little icon next to each of the securities. And when you hover over, it, it'll tell you what that icon is expressing. Here it's saying view new panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And it's gonna split the chart into two different panels for me. So I can visualize this data in a slightly different way. Now this might not be so useful if you're looking to compare total returns, you might want that to be on the same panel. So let's try something different. So here I've pulled up the trailing revenue for Apple and I'm gonna pull that along and change it to 20 years. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a bar chart and make it blue. If I want the label to change to the same color as the chart, we can go up here on the top left-hand side and just make that coherent. I wanna show how Apple's revenues have grown over time, or I might wanna show a margin overlay. We'll do both of those and I'll show you some of the things that you can do to make it look more visually appealing. So I told you that every data point in Coifin within reason has the ability to be transformed. If, if I wanna show something that is a derivative of the data series I'm already showing, like revenue growth, for example, you would look up the same data series and you would have two revenue growth data series here. At first glance, Coifin is gonna think, okay, you wanna show that same data series twice, um, but what we wanna do is show the growth over time. So I'm gonna go over here to indicator settings again for the second total revenue data series that I have, and I'm gonna transform this data. And what this is gonna allow me to do is show it as a percentage or a numerical term for year over year growth or quarter over quarter growth. And there's a bunch of other options in here as well, such as drawdown from all time high, which is useful for price data, drawdown from peak, cumulative performance. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. I wanna show year over year growth for trailing revenue. So I'm gonna go ahead and transform the data to show that. At first instance, it looks a bit muddy. The blues kind of blend in with one another and we can't really see what's going on there. We do have a dual axis, which is what we want. Some things we could do here is number one, we could change this to a color that more readily identifies in the background. We could also change the color of the bar chart to be something a little lighter so that it shows up more clearly. What I like doing personally for showing revenue growth, however, is popping the second version into a new panel, transforming that into a bar chart. And now very quickly you've established, here is the long run revenue base of Apple. And here's how that's changed over time as a bar chart. It's quicker and more easy to understand in my opinion. You can see the peaks and the troughs and when Apple goes through periods of negative revenue. If I wanted to show something like revenue as a bar chart, and then I wanted each of the income statement items, EBIT, gross profit, and net income to show up on the same panel, we could show those separately. Alternatively, we could push those all up into the top chart. We could group the axis so that they're all grouped and we could change it to linear. So now what we have here is the bar chart represents revenue and each of these lines represents the trailing gross EBIT and net income figures. We can go ahead and change these all to be thick, to change to colors that more closely show up with the background. And you might come up with something that looks like this. The data series that you're exposed to doesn't have to just be limited to fundamental data. Although we do have everything you could find on an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, we also have forward estimates, both in percentage and numerical terms. We have asset specific data that covers equities, fixed income, mutual funds, and ETFs. 
You also have all the market data and technical indicators you want as well. So now that we have an understanding of the chart settings, I want to remind you that you can go to the settings panel here on the left hand side and you can change all the defaults for these charting settings so that every time you jump into the charting tool, they're set up in that way. So you can change the fonts of the axis to be bigger. You can change their color. You can alter background colors. You can add grids and you can change the consistency of those grids. You can choose what to show in the legend. You might not want the price or value to pop up in the legend. You can change how axis labels are structured. You can change the crosshairs and you can also edit the panels and how they're construed on the left hand side as well. If you ever want to share this chart, what to do is head to the share button up here on the right hand side. When you click that, we're going to give you a default image as a template. You're more than welcome to kind of copy this, embed it, download it, copy paste it and share it wherever you want. But if you want to customize that a little bit further, if you hit the customize button here, I'm going to take you into the sharing settings where you can change the dimensions of your chart. For example, usually when you share to Twitter, you want it to be a little bit more boxy. You can change the resolutions. You can add titles to your chart as well. And here on the left-hand side, you can add logos to your chart. Similar to how you change them in the chart tool itself, you can also alter the axis styling colors and sizes. You can add grids. You can change that grid styling and you can play around with the labels and legend settings too. When you're ready, you can just right click and copy image, save image, or you can download it. The great thing about the Coifin charting tool is that you can save all of these preferred views as templates. You'll see there is a template dashboard here in the middle of the left-hand panel. So let's say this is a view that we would want to see for a number of stocks, the revenue over time and the revenue growth rate. All we would do is click the save icon, save as, and then you give your template a name and you can reuse that throughout Coifin. If, for example, I want to view this dividend snapshot that I created, which shows you the dividend amount, the yield, the growth rate, and the payout ratio, I don't want to have to recreate this every time I look at a dividend company. So this way, all I have to do is type in another dividend company, and I can see that exact same view for that company every time I need it. You can set these up for anything you want. So here's one for US inflation, which shows year over year, month over month, as well as the core inflation rate year over year and month over month. Here is a chart that shows the 10 year averages of a bunch of valuation multiples. Here's a chart template that shows the activity and share of purchases, as well as the number of shares outstanding and the percentage change over time. For companies with inventory, you might be interested in a cash conversion cycle and how that's broken down. You can create a template for that and flick through it with multiple securities. Here's a template that gives you a quick glance at an ETF's asset center management, as well as their cumulative flows. So creating chart templates is useful if you're going to be in the charting tool a lot, but it's also something that can be transferred over to the dashboards. So for those who don't know, the dashboard section of Coifin is where we give you a bunch of pre-made dashboards that cover things like US sectors and macro themes like factors, global yields, recent IPOs, commodities, corporate credit, fixed income factors, and factor analysis. But we also allow you to build your own custom dashboards as well. So how you would do that is you borrow components from the watch list feature, the charting feature, the market scatter feature, and the news icons. You would create a new dashboard. You would open up a blank one. And here you have a bunch of components where you can add a watch list of securities that you're interested in tracking. You can add a dedicated news feed for those securities and the Arguably largest component to this is that you can add intraday performance and historical graph templates. We give you a bunch that you can choose from. So if I go ahead and pick Google here, it's going to show me a price chart for Google. If I go to the settings of this chart, I can actually choose from the templates available, the ones that I've already created. So if I pull up that share or purchase chart that I showed you earlier, I can now have this view within a dashboard. I can drag that to make it smaller and I can add other different chart templates as well, such as this PE versus mean over a period of time. So I can create a view that I wanna see every day uh, for a bunch of securities in my watch list. When I flick through these, it's gonna change the view so that it attaches itself to the security I wanna look at. So here's a few examples of what you can build in the dashboards using that custom chart feature. So this one is an ETF view. This watch list is populated with ETFs that I'm interested in. We have a percentage premium discount to NAV here on the bottom left. And up here, we have that ETF view that I showed you earlier, which is a chart template, which shows the assets under management and the cumulative flow. Here we have something that's maybe more related to a portfolio view. 
We have a list of companies in here that you might own. You have an EPS view quarterly and the year-over-year -year growth rate. You have the cash conversion cycle. You have the PE versus the mean. You have revenue and growth profit trends and growth. And you also have the share repurchase template that I showed you. Here's a slightly different fundamental view. It has more of a focus on forward valuation multiples, balance sheet items, including debt and current ratios. It has forward revenue estimates, margin breakdowns, and growth of revenues, gross profit, and EBIT. Here's a more simple dashboard, which just has portfolio companies, a news feed for those companies. And then every time I'm going to click on a security here, it's going to add them into this year-to-date performance chart. This is a slightly more news-centric version of that. Here on the left-hand side, I have a watch list with portfolio companies. Down here, I have a scatter plot, which I can show on an X and Y basis, the relationship between any two of those hundreds of data series that we have. In the middle, I have a big news feed, and up here, I have a year-to-date performance, and down here, I have an intraday performance chart. As I keep saying, all of these things do not have to just be about equities. You see here that I built a watch list for headline year-over-year -year inflation rates for every country, and on the right-hand side, I have a simple price chart which allows me to plot the inflation rates of multiple countries at once. You may be more technically inclined. I certainly am not. So I built this very rudimentary technical chart, which has a stochastic and an RSI, as well as some moving averages, as well as an intraday chart. And every time that I'm going to go down this list of securities, it's going to change that view for me. You can also create more niche macro related dashboards. So here on the left hand side, I have two watch lists, an A watch list and a B watch list, and the A or B above each chart indicates which watch list they speak to. So this chart here shows the US credit card default rate over time, as well as the change year over year. So what we can see here is the default rate for consumer credit cards is going up, but relative to history, it's still pretty low. And on the right hand side here, I have US unemployment claims, both on the weekly level, the four week average, and then continuing claims. And these are all things that you can build inside the Coifin chart tool. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, just a few reminders before I let you go. Number one, pretty much any data series that you see on Coifin has the ability to be charted. So when you're clicking here in a data series, just remember that we have hundreds of things that you can search for. And most of those data series can be contorted or transformed to show what you want to present. And if you ever have any questions about how you can create a specific chart on Coifin, please don't hesitate to reach out to me in the comments section, or you can reach out to our Twitter account at Coifin Charts. Thank you.